Friends, you never know who you'll touch in life. You never know how or when you'll have an impact or how important your example can be to someone else. My faith helps me understand that circumstances don't dictate my happiness or my inner peace. The chances you take, the people you meet, the people you love, the faith that you have, that's what's going to define you. You have to be who you are in this world, no matter what. At the end of the day, my friends, it's not about what you have or even what you've accomplished. It's about what you've done with those accomplishments. It's about who have you lifted up? Who have you made better? It's about what you've given back to those people. I think, personally, a role model is a mentor, someone who you see on a daily basis and you learn from them. My faith taught me how to forgive. Faith taught me when people present themselves in a certain way, there's probably some backstory or issue or reason for the way that they are acting. It's not you, my friends. It's them. And a lot of times, it's about something that's completely out of their control. Put God first. I've been protected. I've been directed. I've been corrected. <clears throat> I've kept God in my life and it's kept me humble. I didn't always stick with him, but he always stuck with me. Don't be afraid to think outside the box. Don't be afraid to fail big, to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams and they ultimately fuel disappointment. And understand, to achieve these goals, you must apply discipline and consistency. You'll never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. It's not how much you have in life. It's about what you do with what you have. It, that's where the success is in helping others. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. That's how I live my life. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. My advice is this, and it's simple. Don't just aspire to make a living. Friends, aspire to make a difference. And may God bless each and every one of you. And take good care. Good morning. Uh -huh. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I am an addiction recovery coach, a life coach, and author, and the host of this show, The Take Your Life Back Today radio show. You can see a video version of this if you go to YouTube under channel Take Your Life Back Today show. We're out here early in the morning. God has not turned the lights on yet. This is part four of the Holy Spirit. It's the last part. And when the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment in John 16:8. The Holy Spirit, uh, Spirit, Part 4. Yesterday we focused on the Holy Spirit uh, convicts Christians of their sins and the need to get rid, uh, to get right with God. Remember, this isn't done out of God's desire to judge and condemn, but out of his great love for each of us. Jesus came that they may have life and, uh, and have it abundantly. In John 10.10, 10, through the Holy Spirit, God convicts to warn and guide us down the right path. But what I find most amazing is the Holy Spirit convicts everyone, even those who are not believers. Really? Did you know that? You might be a faith skeptic or even completely disinterested in all things God, and yet the Holy Spirit has somehow led you to this particular daily devotion. In John 16, 8, our scripture references, it states, The Holy Spirit will convict the world, that means all of us. All of us, my friend. For some of us, it's the moment we discover the overwhelming power of God's love through Jesus Christ that convicts or awakens our hearts to the need to surrender all to God. That moment, my friends, when it happens, is the most important decision in a person's life. You might ask why. Because it's a decision to choose God's way rather than our way. It's the Holy Spirit that is behind this conviction, this eye-opening to our need for God. He convicts us and draws us in, but is ultimately a personal decision each of us must make. 
whether or not to give our lives to God through the person of Jesus Christ. And when we do, and when we do, the Holy Spirit will dwell with, within each of us and act as guide and helper, giving us the inner desire to walk in, in obedience with God's will. It all comes back to God's love, my friends. God first loved us through Jesus Christ, and because of that love, he offers us a way to walk in forgiveness and obedience with his will. Thanks Thanks to the Holy Spirit, whose conviction helps open our eyes to our need for Christ. We can be confident that we will never walk this faith journey alone. So what about you this morning? Have you felt the conviction of the Holy Spirit? Have you responded to the incredible gift of love that God offers you? Think about that. And call me at 844-405-HELP. Together, you and I, we can help each other take our lives back. Be good to yourselves and always be good to each other. And remember, a simple smile to anyone can change their day. God has not turned the lights on out here, down in Wilson's, Virginia. But let the light shine in your heart this early morning, no matter where you're watching me or listening to me on the radio. Because God truly loves you. And he is waiting for you to reach out and, and, and ask him for guidance and direction. Take good care and we'll talk to you later.